Hey there, it's Rachel Mullins, the host of Hashtag No Filter Fridays on Public House Media. This is Sam Kirby, host of Cinema Stories here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Cinema Stories, where we hang out and just talk movie and TV news and reviews, and it's awesome. A new show comes out every single Tuesday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Cinema Stories. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. I can't believe we're finally doing this. It feels like I've been working on this for so long yeah. and now it's finally here and we're live and I'm super excited. We have an I'm awesome sure co-host why. today. This is my sister Keely and we hey. have talked about doing a podcast slash video series together for a mm-hmm. while because I don't know. I mean, we get along. We were sisters. We were. But People think we're entertaining, I guess. So hopefully you're entertained during that. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. So we can see all of your comments. Even though we're doing this through Be Live, we can see all of your comments on Facebook, your likes, whatever, your reactions. So let us know how you're liking the show as we go. And if you have questions. Um, But yeah, we're going to get going. We're just going to dive in. This podcast is going to be just a really fun kind of relaxed way to talk about lifestyle, pop culture, and we'll also be interviewing really cool guests every single week, um, talking to some really cool movers and shakers and getting tips and tricks and advice from them about success um, and different things yep. like that. So it'll be a great you know, way for people. If you're in the car, you're driving somewhere. I know I do that a ton as Miss Wisconsin. I'm always sure. listening to podcasts and I love I love that because you really get to be a part of people's conversations, I think, and you're led into their lives a little bit. It's a really great alternative to music. So, so yeah, Outside. make sure you let your friends know that you're listening yeah. as well. That's a huge thing. Whether you're watching us share on Facebook it. Live right now or you're listening a little bit later on the podcast, share it with your friends. Tag your friends in the comments. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and then don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. So this podcast will be available um, every other Tuesday. It's a bi-weekly podcast and Facebook Live combo, and it will be available on iTunes so you can subscribe to our channel, and you'll get to hear us every other week. Yeah exactly what you want. Love it. Love it. Coming through your speech. So the first thing we're going to talk about today, our first segment will always be lifestyle. So Ooh. for this premiere episode, we're going to be kind of going through the layout of the show. And every different every episode we do, I'll have kind of like an alternating co-host. So you'll see Keely um, every once in a while. But we're going to talk about yeah. lifestyle first and foremost. And one of the coolest things that we actually started doing, we didn't know we were doing this together, but we both started watching New Girl recently. So good. And I feel like we are really kind of like jumping on things. We're a little late to the party because yeah. most of my friends that I've talked right. to have already watched New Girl. They're in like, see, isn't it season six right now? There's so That's many on Netflix. I mean, there's, yeah, we're late to the game because I'm still, I'm on season one. Yeah. So we're late to the game. Yeah. I'm on season three. So I think I started oh, so a little bit ahead yeah, of you. Started but I am so obsessed. It's, it's one a- of those shows that you can just get yeah. so hooked on, so addicted to. And it's a great girl time show. And yeah. I, when we started watching it, when I started watching it, I was actually at the Miss Wisconsin sleepover with a oh, bunch okay. of the contestants mm-hmm. from this year. And we started watching it because they were all, I mean, it was like 2 a.m. And yeah, we were like, yeah. oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We don't want to go to bed. Right. So we threw on New Girl and yeah, I was show. hooked. Yeah, no, I, I love the main character, Jess. She's just got such a fun personality. I love the fact that she doesn't care what other people think of Yeah, her. she's so relatable. Yeah. So um, much of I West- just love it each character goes through on the show is it's so like relatable. real life. Right. And they're each and that's so dorky. Like that's it. what I love about it. Like each yeah. of them has such a dorky personality, like whether right. it's Jess or one of the guys, mm-hmm. they're so quirky. And I just yeah. love that. Yeah. So, okay. I'm assuming most people are ahead of season like three because we're super far behind. So hopefully this doesn't spoil anything. Are you for Jess and Nick? Absolutely. You wanted to have. I feel like I can't spoil I feel it like, though for you because I'm a little bit further. Yeah, ahead. you're further than I am. But like, since I watched that one episode with you in season three, I mm-hmm. kind of know what's gonna happen. 
And I think I'm for them. I'm for sure team Jess and Nick. I think that they're perfect for each other. They're both so awkward, but they like work perfectly. They work together. Yeah. They make it work. I love it. And I'm also team CC and Schmidt. Oh, same. I really want that to happen because right now I'm like in season one. That's when they first start to like hit it off a little bit. Yeah. And I'm yeah. all for I'm it. Obsessed. So I'm glad them. the wedding got ruined. I know. Season three. But I, okay. So I know what's going to happen after that. Did it's, you read the McKenna? Okay. McKenna reads all the Blake, um, the reality, reality Steve, Steve thing yeah. that ruined the surprises for you. So she always knows who wins the bachelor, who wins the bachelorette. And like, yeah, I don't know about you guys. I'm not like that at all. Like, I love, I love this prize. I feel like that's like, no, but you like doing that. comes from maybe like some deep rooted problem I have with like, not liking uncertainty. Yeah, you do. I like, don't know. I, think you I like don't like being surprised. I don't like right. uncertainty. I always want to know what's going to happen. Right. So I always look up the spoilers. Yeah. I always I, I'm not like that, but I'm, I'm a spontaneous person. I kind of like just living life as you know taking what comes yeah, yeah. you're definitely just, more of that person than yeah I so <laughs> i'm not surprised you watched ahead or you read ahead did you read ahead is that how you know what's about to happen I'm re- on, yeah online i know of i course. know how it is but i'm still watching it i'm still enjoying it i'm oh still living gosh. it oh my gosh. it's great it's we watch a lot of the same shows because we also watch white collar highly oh yes that's that another one. good that's show. a good one but that's you like, got me hooked on that that's completely different than new girl though that's really not different? like along the same lines no new girl but it's just interesting. We watch all the same stuff. We do. We love The Bachelor, Bachelorette. So when Bachelorette comes back on with Becca, oh my gosh, I love her. Yes. We're for sure going to have to make that a yeah, we'll, podcast. We'll watch. Yeah, for sure. We'll have weekly updates or bi-weekly updates. I, I would love that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. A, I'm a big Bachelor fan. What other shows are we like super obsessed with? Um, Wait, let's a little bit of Idol. We go in and out of American Idol. We do. Now we that do. it's back. We used to be really big into Idol, but then I went away. But now that it's back. We yeah. are pretty good followers this yeah. season. I feel like we are the kind of people that don't watch things when they're happening, though. Right. No, we watch them back on Netflix. You always watch it back on Netflix yeah. or um, you record it. Right. Just because things can get so busy. But I feel like that's yeah. how most people are nowadays, where they I think just watch things back. Doesn't, like, do all of you just watch things on Netflix? I mean, I don't know if people actually watch, like, live TV anymore. Yeah, no. I mean, I, maybe the news. But I don't think people, like, actually stop and let's say they, like, sit and watch Modern Family each week. I don't even know if Modern Family is still on, but if it is, it is. It's is a it show. really? It's a great it's show. Still I still on. watch it sometimes. Yeah. So do people stop and like actually make time to watch every, most of the people I know. Week? Well, cause I'm like, I'm a college student. So all the college students I know are always like watching it. Yeah. You know, when they have a study break or something like that, but I'm just always on Netflix. That's what I've turned to. I know that's why Netflix is But that's is like bae. my age generation. Too, Netflix is bay. It is. It really it's is. Life, guys. It, really it is, is life. It is Huge addictive Netflix though. Fans. And it's a blessing that our family still pays for our Netflix account. I hope that it continues for like ever because we can just <laughs> think, uh, hitchhike. The only pain is though, you can only have four screens now because Netflix caught on to the fact that everyone was sharing each other's usernames and passwords. Yeah. And now it's killing our It's tragic. Because we have six it's people. Tragic. Yeah. So it's a struggle, but it's okay. okay. So moving on. To pop culture, obviously, we have to talk about the Met Ball because yes. it was so iconic. And that theme. That theme. So, that okay. Was, I don't know if I liked it or not. I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, we probably share the same thoughts on it because we live in the same household. Right. But I have mixed feelings about the theme. So, for those of you who are listening who don't know what yeah. the Met Ball is, every year there's this big gala hosted at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. And all these A-list celebrities come out and they're dressed to the nines in these really kind like of costume-like costume like yeah. Out, yeah, it's very out there. Mm-hmm. It's not like a typical red carpet at all. Right. Um, designers really get to show their more creative side, which I think is really cool because oh, I yeah, love fashion. Sure. I know you love fashion for too. Sure. But I will say so the theme this year was Heavenly Bodies. And it was a tribute to fashion and the Catholic Church. So designers were supposed to kind of just interpret that however they right. wanted to. And I loved most of the looks that I saw on the carpet. However, there were a couple that kind of I think crossed the line of religious appropriation yeah. a little bit. Like, no, I got I understand mm-hmm. like where a lot of the designers were coming from and where they were right. trying to go, but I don't know. I think that can be like a really murky line right. to cross. Well, and I know that so they were saying um 
on the news when they were covering it that it was great. The lots of the Italian designers were super excited about it. Yeah. Because you know, with Rome um, in that country, that whole culture community is centered around Christianity. And, and so I know ca- yeah, Catholicism, yeah. fashion and Catholicism. That's why they thought it was super cool. And I get that. Like, I think that's really unique how they got to how um, designers in Italy really got to express their culture and kind of what they've um, grown up with. Yeah. But I don't know some of them, but now this is also me. I don't know. Sometimes I don't get like modern, some of the fashion, fashion. Can be so like out even there. if you're yeah. on, not even on Met Gala, like outside yeah. of that, there are just some outfits that people wear and I, it's just not my taste, but yeah. that's what's great that's is fair. we all have different tastes, but I don't know. There were some things, um, Rihanna's outfit. Okay. I mean, well, we're going to go through it. We're going to go through yeah. it. So, okay. Yeah. Let's look at people's outfits. For those of you who are watching live, you'll get to be a part of this segment. Unfortunately, our podcast listeners will not, um, because it's a visual segment. So we're going to pull up like 10 different looks and hit, they're going to hit or miss them. Okay. I don't know if you've seen all these. Um, I saw them because I uploaded these images okay, today, see. but we're going to start here. So this is Kate Bosworth mm-hmm. and um, she, I think, looks stunning. I like it. It's I a, love it. I think it's a hit for me. I love the veil. I loved how, how lots of females chose to use the veils yep. um, just because it's something you don't see on carpets ever. So I thought that was really unique. And also the one plus, I think a lot of people were dressed modestly. Yes. There was oh, no two how you know, I really I, appreciate that. I, I mean that too. I think modest is hottest. I think she looks a little more to the amazing. imagination. Go you, you look beautiful. So I love it. Yes. And it, it, you know, I seriously give props to any woman who can find a venue to wear a wedding dress without it being her actual wedding. And that clearly, like, that is something that I would wear at my wedding. So props to her. She looks amazing. Okay. Our next one is Alicia Vikander. I think she slayed this look. I'm obsessed. You like it? I'm obsessed. I think it looks like, I almost get, like, nun vibes from it in a weird way. Right. But it's so classy. I love the gloves. I loved her hair. I loved how her hairstylist did her hair with that. Um, headband and I think the dress is just exquisite too see I just I don't know this is my tasting and I don't like how bold the white is because right now when I look at that picture all I see is the white I'm losing her face and the rest of her incredible figure I'm losing her I'm face. losing her face I don't see it I just you see sound the white. like who's the guy from Project Runway who's like girl I'm losing the face yeah. Oh my gosh. I, know, right? I forget his name right now. I cannot remember his name. But I don't know. I just feel like the white's a bit too much maybe, but that's my taste. I still think she looks pretty with the glo- I like the gloves. That's a hit for me. I that's do like hit. the that's gloves. By the way, right. real quick, we're going to cut in. We have yeah. um, a couple of comments. Our mom's watching. That's really hey, adorable. Mom. Thanks, mom. Batch- Love you. <laughs> Baxter loves The Bachelor. Love it. Okay, see? Yes. David, Looks I like agree with you. Marble. I agree. Not I mean, my favorite David, look. David, you have a point now that you say that. It like, kind, I wasn't thinking like marble that. until he kind made that like, comment. Yeah, she's in yeah. like a granite or marble dress. I get it. Also, thanks, Jeff, for watching. Thank You're you, so Jeff. sweet. Um, okay, so we're going to take Alicia away here and bring okay. up our next person. So, Frances McDuff, I don't even know how to say her last name. But I have no idea what in the Sam heck is going on with this outfit. I cannot what even. What is she trying? Okay. How does that relate to the theme at all? Like, First what, of all, there's no correlation no, to the theme. She Second like of plant. all, she looks like she got, like, fell into a bush. And she then, looks like, like a plant. Forgot to, like, yeah. take it out of her like hair. A, like I a water know. lily or something because you've got that yellow peeping through. But also, like, it made her, like. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Do you guys watching think that this is nuts or is it just us? Because this, like, I don't even get fashion vibes from this. Like, it looks like she's wearing yeah. a potato sack that was dyed teal blue and fell into a bush and just couldn't Sweetheart, take out all the pieces from her hair. You're covering your entire face. We can't see you. Like, there's no, all you can see are her hands there. That's it's, weird. It's a total miss for me. Total miss. So yeah. we're going to send that one away. Kind of a fashion disaster, if you ask me. Absolutely. Okay. The next one makes me super excited because I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. Okay. Yes, Khaleesi, slay my life. Okay. So Amelia Clark, I believe this is Dolce & Gabbana. I think she looks fabulous. Yeah. Um, Totally get where the designer was going with this mm-hmm. one. 
I also feel like I'm just a little bit biased because I love Game you of Thrones so much. I don't watch it. P.S. If anybody watching is a Game of Thrones fan, please comment below so that I know I'm not alone. Sometimes I feel like a bit of a nutcase because I'm like so obsessed with it. But no, I'm the family watches it except I know. Episode. I just love it so much. Yeah. So anyways, I think she looks bomb. Yeah. I totally love it. I like the neckline. That's really different. Um, just not your standard uh, heart-shaped neckline. Uh, it's really unique. So I like that neckline that she chose to go with, how it's a little bit more boxy of a V. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm wondering what that drawing, is it a painting in the middle? Yes, of it is. It, that was kind of like so a common different. theme too. By the way, Maddie says Francis is a mood. That is so <laughs> perfect. I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. So Maddie, Maddie watches. Okay. You're not alone. Um, I, oh, David says, I feel like she was trying to cosplay as some PBS kids show character, but I don't know what. Yes, yes. David. Yes. yes. That was very eloquently was stated. She Thank should be on Teletubbies. That. that that could fit in on Teletubbies. That dress I we mean, seen earlier. It, it might as well. Okay, the next one I'm also a big fan of. This is Ooh, probably one of my faves. Love. Lily Collins. Yes. Um, I piece, though. Totally rock I mean, this. Yeah, yes. headpiece was stunning. I'm in love with like the cut of this yes. dress. I just think, yeah, the headpiece. It was all about the headpieces this year too. The right. headpieces were like right. such a big part of everyone's look. I thought it was really Loved nice it. too how she used how she incorporated um just so subtly the theme because she had a rosary in her hand. Yeah. And so that was it was a lot more subtle, I think. Yeah, some of the other I think females a, I chose think a couple to go, and even males actresses did but that. I thought that was, that was a nice, nice touch. touch, and I love. We're gonna show Maddie's comment up here. Through. Maddie Gosh. says, "Khaleesi, mother of dragons, queen of the netball," and I could not agree more. <laughs> Thank you for that, Maddie. <laughs> I love it. Okay, moving on. We've got a couple more to show. Oh, our first couple, love Pretty. Giselle and Tom. Yeah, love them. Yes, our next guest. I can see her. She's given a little pump pump up right yes. now. Um, I think they are Hollywood's, one of Hollywood's hottest couples. Oh, I thought sure. she looked like an angel. She's beautiful. I loved it. It was so I mean, elegant. she is an angel. Well, she was an angel, I guess. Yeah, she technically she was. You're right. But yeah. um, I love that color. I love how it's draping on her. Simple, sophisticated, makes a statement. Love Huge it. hit for me. Love I mean, it. It looks great on her skin tone with her hair, everything. Great job. Hit. Tom looks good too, but like, let's be real. I mean, it's all about the girl. The girl, yeah. Let's be honest. Okay, let's show a couple more. Oh, you want to do this one? Yeah, next? I'll just okay. do this one. Katy Perry. Oh my okay, gosh, girl. girl. How, I want to know how she fit in the car. I want to know how she got to the Met Ball because that's crazy, girl. You like, had did to, like, they put those like no. on top of the car? Like, I'm imagining them strapping those on top of the car. No. There's no way those would have fit in the that car. That girl had to like U-haul <laughs> her dress there. I mean, that's kudos insane. to you, just getting the dress there. I mean. Snaps for that. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a statement. It's a statement. It's unique. I don't I know. Like it. I don't know. Well, I love the wings. I don't know that I love like the little mini dress and the boots. Yeah. I think I would have chosen, pick something a little bit more elegant because yeah. I think the wings are so elegant and like also simpler because right. the wings are such a. Victoria's Secret Fashion Show 2018. Is everyone. that a thing that's happening? No, but it should be. She's got the wings. Oh yeah. You're Victoria's right. Victoria's Secret. Right. Swoop her they up. She has got the wings. The wings. Borrow the wings. Yes. Okay, girl is ready we're going to do a couple day. more. Let's see. Oh, we have to do this one. This was my favorite of the entire oh, night. yes. Kendall. Kendall Jenner. Yes, Love. girl. Oh, my gosh. So understated. So simple. And, like, so unexpected, too. Because, like, so everything classy. we've seen has been so out there. Yeah. This, you could honestly wear to a normal red carpet event mm -hmm. too, but it just works so perfectly. I loved it. The little details, like the train on the legs, for instance, on the pantsuit, those are the little things that just put this outfit over the top, the gloves. I mean, everything about it, her hair from head to toe, she is just stunning. Yeah, she looks beautiful. Christian Conrad Collins, AKA mom, writes, slay Kendall, yes. absolutely. Yes. Oh, we've got, oh, our sister's chiming in too. Oops. We're going to save your comment for just a hot second. I, We're going to take Kendall yes. away. We're going to do two more. We're going to yes. save that one for the end because I think we both adore that one. Yes. Can we talk about this one? This one is kind of confusing. Okay. I, I'm really no. confused about this. Okay. I know no that they're me. like fashion icons and stuff, but girlfriends, no. You literally look like you are wearing like sure buzz. Like I think that they looks look like, like a bed sheet. I'm confused you know, like a about fancy this. Bed whole sheet. Look. I don't know. I'm confused I don't like about it. this. I don't get it. I mean, maybe the they hair? were going for like 
Jesus and the desert it looks vibes. Like they just woke up. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, not a fan. Last one. Love, love Blake. Major, yes, Blake. Okay. Yes, Blake never does us wrong. Blake is an icon, and she just. I know she always She's kills epic. it. Any She's runway epic. she steps foot on, she kills it. And let's just talk about her and Ryan. For me, they are my favorite celebrity Goals. couple. I know. Goals. I know. Love those two, the kiddos. I mean, come love on, it. Blake love Lively. It. Love the girl. I think she, she and Kendall were like my top two. Yeah. I love them. Just the embroidery, the detailing on that dress. They were fabulous. So stunning. They were fabulous. Yes. Love that. Agreed. All right. So now that we've gone through our Met Ball yes. recap. Anything else happened at the Met Ball that was, like, epic? Um, I saw something oh. on Twitter, actually. I have to tell you. This was kind of funny. Okay. It was, like, a picture of Kendall, and it was her, like, swinging her ponytail. Yeah. And the caption was, when you're the only one in the family who doesn't have to worry about getting a babysitter. And I was like, oh, actually, well, I, mean, like, I had to talk about that though. for a second. But, like, now that Chloe has a baby yeah. and Kylie has a baby, they all have kids right. except Kendall. Well, technically, Rob does, too. But, like, yeah, that's yeah. A whole confusing I situation. always forget about Rob, though. I feel bad about Rob. I always forget Rob. about him. He always kind of was that way. But. I feel like that kind of eerily mimics our family in a our way. Our family, yeah. We've got exactly. a brother, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> he exists. We love him. Okay. Yeah, he's a doll. All right. So... We are going to bring on our guest for the evening. I'm super excited. She so is fabulous, this everyone. woman is one of my closest friends for very obvious reasons when I tell you who she is in just a moment. Um, she is a go-getter. She is totally tech marketing savvy. She has been such an amazing help to me this year in my year as Miss Wisconsin. She is Courtney Pila, Miss Wisconsin 2016. Woo! Welcome to Table Talk, Courtney. She's pulling up right here in just a second. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I am in the show now. Awesome. You're in the show. You are the first guest of Table Talk. Welcome. Thank you. you look amazing. Thanks. Yeah, you look so cute. Is this like your work outfit? Because this is working. Uh, no, it's not what I wore today. I was running around the shopping center so much. I got a little sweaty. So I just tossed a comfier dress back on. Oh, oh you look God. adorable. So yeah. chic. So chic. So Courtney is kind of just like this amazing woman. Just Stop. I can't even believe like everything that you've done since you gave up the title of Miss Wisconsin 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been really awesome because we've gotten to become really good friends this year, which I'm so grateful for because for those of you, well, I mean, most people don't know what it's like to be Miss Wisconsin, right. but when you're put in um, this job so quickly and you just have to hit the ground running right away, it's really nice to have such a helpful person who has been through it and knows how to kind of coach you through everything. So I was really grateful to have you here all year, even though it's sadly coming to an end. That's crazy. I feel weird even. I mean, I thought I felt weird giving it up towards the end last year, but I feel, I feel very similar about you. <laughs> I know. It's like, you're almost reliving it again. <laughs> like I can't, no, I know it. It's, it's not fun. I'm not looking forward to it. Kind of just like trying to hold on to it a little right. bit, but yeah, but yeah, we have gotten to know each other really well. And one of the things that we've actually done together, probably one of like the crazier things that I've done this year, and this is going to make me sound like so pathetic because I'm saying it's one of the crazier things I did, but yeah. I took I a psych use class. That word. I took a psych class in April, and I know that that shouldn't be crazy, <laughs> but like I don't do cardio ever, no. ever, ever, ever. I always go to the gym and I just do weights. And so to take a psych class was yeah. like holy moly, buckle up! And Courtney did it with me, <laughs> and we survived. You were killing it the whole time. We were one of the oh. only ones in the front row. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I put myself so you can like book yourself online. Right. In a, in a specific, on a specific bike. And I like intentionally put myself yeah. in the front row because I needed the instructor to like stare me down and make sure I kept oh my pedaling. Cause I knew I'm a I was second row quit. girl. I'm a second row girl. <laughs> I'm always in the second row in my like, classes. No front for me. I feel like, I feel like they pick you out then. Like, yeah. Like and you always got to be on top of things. And you know what? Sometimes I just yeah. need to sit back in the seat. Like, no, I can't do it. Like they think I can, but I can't. Courtney, so you were in the first in the row with row. me, right? Yeah, I get really claustrophobic if I'm in the second or third row. I like being in the front. And I also mm -hmm. have this thing. I don't want other people's sweat flying on me. It happened once when I was in the second row. Yes. And I'll go to the front row now. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my <laughs> god! Someone's sweat flew onto you. So gross. One of oh. those things kind of get scarred from the second row. So oh my, yeah, that's tragic. I'm never gonna go in the oh. second row now. Oh. Wow. Good yeah, you're know. making me rethink everything, Courtney. I'm it, so sorry. It happened. <laughs> I feel like the row you choose in cycling class is actually like really like an indicator of it's who you are as a person, time. like your personality, what you prefer, yeah, that kind of thing. Like, I feel like people yeah. who would choose the background, I don't know, because I'm not that kind of person, maybe are like more laid back. Like, I can see that, yeah. you know, I don't know. Maybe I I'm just feel making like that the up. the second but... row and third row are just the people that want to hide because we're just like... <laughs> <laughs> because when you are in the front row, this is my theory, guys. When you are in the front row, the teacher is watching you all the time. And if you're like me, I am a goody two shoes. So like I always feel like I have to do what the teacher says. Mm -hmm. And it, that means like I have to follow along and do exactly what the teacher says. Like it's just, I don't know. It's 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 stressful for me. I am a second row and back type of girl. I can't handle the pressure of the front. There's like pressure. And then the people behind you, like me, I'm a second row girl. I'm watching everyone in front of me. And I can look at your little screen. I know how fast you're going, girl. And I don't want people doing that to me. <laughs> That's true. Because they do have those little light up yeah. monitors. And yeah. I am very wary of that. Because I tend to like be on the slower side. Because yeah. they put those charts up in the room. Yeah. So everyone can see your name. Yep. And your stats. Which I don't like. That's embarrassing. Because I'm like the last one out of the entire class. When you do the races. Like everyone yes. is moving around except me. I like stay in a constant spot. And I'm like, I'm working so hard. How am I not? I'm moving? like pulling the team down, like yes. below average. Yes. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's a struggle. Really it's a struggle. But we had a ton of fun and they had snacks. I, love it. I need to go back super soon. I haven't been since then. And spinning yeah. is the one thing I did to prepare for Miss Wisconsin that, I mean, it was amazing. Um, yeah. slowly got back into it the last few months. I did okay. not know that. That's what you did to get yeah. ready for Miss Wisconsin. Yeah, that was the biggest thing I did. I did psych at um, the one that was on campus in okay. like the Lucky Building. Did it. I looked back at a planner when I was getting a note for someone of like how many times a month I did interview practice. I went spinning a lot. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I know. That's like looking back at, you know, like a year ago. That's like what I think about when I think about my time as a dancer. Yeah. I'm in the studio again, rehearsing for Miss Wisconsin. And I'm like, how on earth did I ever dance like for a yeah. job eight hours a day? Because I can barely get through a two minute routine. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. It's so, so bad. But anyways, at Psych, they had snacks afterwards, which is what I wanted to talk oh, about. That was delicious. <laughs> I'm so jealous because then I went. So you guys, you both went to Cycle Bar, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So then I went to the Capital East one. They have two oh, locals. Have that one yet? Yeah. Um, they didn't have snacks, and I went for the snacks because I was like, "All right, I'm gonna yeah. suffer through this 45 minute class. I'm not big into cycling. I'm a big, I lift and I run. I'm a big runner. We really like avoid cardio like at all well, costs. <laughs> I like running, but that's a, that's about it. So I went for the food because. McKenna had said there was food mm -hmm. and they didn't have any food well, and I was so let down <laughs> and the thing of it was it was all that really expensive healthy like organic food that I never buy for myself oh. because it's so expensive but like I was like oh my gosh I'm gonna I literally filled my yeah, purse you did. With <laughs> the bars because they're like five dollars the rx bars yes Yes, I was stuffing my bag with them. Yeah. <laughs> we're probably like, we're never inviting her back and, like, again. She emptied out a purse full of food. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. Need to go. But I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I but, saved money. So yeah, yeah exactly. that was good. Courtney, you now do, you're into bar, right? You do bar? Yeah. Is that what yeah. you're doing now? Where do you I've, do? I've tried a couple of studios in the area. Um, there was a pure bar, but that just closed in Madison. Um, I started going to bar because the pure bar in Green Bay sponsored some classes when I was Miss Green Bay and Miss Wisconsin and preparing for Miss Wisconsin, Miss America. And I got hooked. Um, there's a bar three studio that is awesome. And then barcode. So I, I kind of do a mix of them. They're all pretty different. Some have more yoga, some are more plotty, some are a little bit more cardio. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've heard good things about it. I yeah, wanted to try yeah. a class. We should go to a class. Yeah. We'll go. Our, um, 
Sarah, the, the salon sponsor for Miss Wisconsin, yeah, she's like a bar instructor. And she's been trying to get me all year to come down and take a bar class in Milwaukee, but it's just never worked out. But it's, I definitely would love to try it just because that, you know, the former dancer, I'm, you know, because you're a dancer too. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious if it like works those same muscles. And yeah, there's some, I think bar three has the most ballet movements. Uh huh. Any of them? Um, I feel the most pretty doing it, but. Oh, that's good to know. It's important okay. to feel pretty when you're working right. out. Exactly. While well, you're sweating and dripping. I remember one of my dance teachers said, if you don't look pretty, you won't dance pretty. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's like my nice. thing. Yeah. Yeah. You got to look good. You got to feel to feel good. Right. Yeah. A hundred percent. hundred percent. hundred percent. Okay. So kind of talking about food, we also share a common love for Bel Air. And I have that written down in my notes here to talk about because I was just there for Cinco de Mayo. Love that. And I don't know if you're like, are you as obsessed with Bel Air as I am? She goes. It's really good. It's really good. I mean, you guys, she goes. You could easily eat every meal there. I'd say you go go twice twice a week, week usually. Twice a week. I mean, didn't you go three times last week? I go a lot. I go a lot. But I remember that one time Sheila and I were there and we had just missed you and Max, I yeah. think. That's be- oh, you missed us by a while because we had reservations at that, I think it's Japanese restaurant, really close to Bel Air. Okay. And we went to the square. We got super hungry and I was kind of getting hangry and he was getting really tired. So I went on open table and canceled a reservation. And I think we went to Bel Air at like three o'clock for dinner. It was maybe four, but it was still like... I I know we got hungry early again and had to have like another dinner here, but I love it. They're tacos. Tacos are so good. I feel is Mexican your favorite. I feel like Mexican is a solid go-to. I love Mexican. I could eat guac every single meal, every single meal and tacos, burritos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know. I was actually just looking on, so on Facebook, you know how they like run cookies so that, they show like the things that you look up and research. Yeah. Well, I had just researched avocado pajamas <laughs> and it showed up in my Facebook feed. And then all this stuff about guacamole, like all this clothing that had like guacamole puns on it. <laughs> you would be the type too to show up in like a nightdress covered in avocado. I mean, why not? I like avocados a lot. I mean, so. I guess. Yeah. Sunday. Yeah, I eat avocados plain. Do you eat avocados plain, Courtney? Yes. I don't know if it was my mom or Mac. I was walking around my house at home, and I was just holding an avocado, and they're like, "What are you doing? That is the what? weirdest thing in the world." And you just spoon eat it, right? I'll, I'll spoon it. I'll just like cut like one in half and walk around the house and just eat it. Yeah. Oh my god! You just salt it a little bit. I put a little bit of salt on mine. Sometimes, yeah, salt, a little bit of salsa, but yeah, or just plain. That's so healthy. I oh eat it plain gosh. though too, and everyone thinks it's so weird. So I'm everyone going to very snack. weird, but it's good, simple, easy snack. It's That's so healthy. It's good for you. I'm on a knife, <laughs> right? For those of you listening, let us know in the comments if you think that's like a normal thing to do because I don't think that's normal. That sounds crazy, you guys. Eating an avocado plain sounds like baby food to me. It's like so good. I don't know. I love it, and the texture. I think, it, oh my I think God. when I first started eating avocados, I would have thought it was weird because I had to get used to the taste, I think, a little bit. But, I mean, I eat them plain all yeah. the time. Yeah. 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 I mean, no, I prefer so to just good. wear them on clothing that, like, work out so <laughs> okay, like, avo cardio and stuff like that. You can get it and wear it to our spinning class. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh exactly. You don't yeah. pretend to be healthy. No, I, oh I literally, I'm like the least healthy eater in the history of, we have a thing of Culver's ice cream. It's, so right bad. Here, guys. it's just so, so bad. Know. And I was just talking she about this. Diet. My Miss America diet consisted of Culver's. Oh yeah. That was oh. like what I ate yeah. leading up to Miss America. Mm-hmm. And it's so bad. Like I'm not proud of that because I feel like my insides are probably just like, Wait. Gross and I unhealthy. Have to tell a story. So I walk into McKenna's bedroom the other day, and she's got this thing of double stuffed, a like extra large package, guys. And it said extra large. I'm talking like it was this big. <laughs> it can't even fit in the screen. Okay, extra large double stuffed Oreos in a extra large Diet Coke from McDonald's. 
And she looks at me and she's like, gosh, Keely, you know what? I really feel like I need to stop being on the Oreo and Diet Coke diet because I just don't think it's good for me. And I looked at her and I was like, McKenna, that is a problem. No one else has. Like, she has to eat food, guys. That is her diet. No. Her diet is eating food. It's so bad. Like more I, food. I don't feel good about it. Like, it, it I'm, doesn't make you feel good. Like, when yeah. I do eat healthy, I feel so much better. But for some reason. But you would rather just, have a thing of Culver's cheese curds. Always want to eat fast food. Always. And that's why I have to go to psych class. And I hate. <laughs> Cycling, and that's why I force myself to buy the membership so I can continue to eat fast food. (laughs) It's so bad. Oreos and Diet Coke, the diet of McKenna Collins. No, it's it's terrible. It's terrible. Courtney and I are eating our whole avocados over here. Okay, good role models, everyone. Literally, literally. Oh goodness, goodness gracious. Okay, so I want to hear. We haven't actually talked about this yet. I want to hear about Las Vegas. Oh, yeah. So I would just went to Las Vegas um, to watch my brother wrestle in the U.S. Open. I think it was the fourth time we were there for wrestling and he took fourth. So he's going to the world team trials next month, which That's is exciting. Amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, excited. Very excited. Um, where is it? I think it's in Oklahoma. So I don't know if I'm going, but I'll watch it on my little computer. But so it was a really good trip all around. He always said he wanted um, to be top in the country. And I still remember when he signed uh, to go to NMU uh, and train at the United States Greco Training Center up there. Uh, the kids in his class said, oh, my God, like, you're never going to do that. Be realistic and just all this crap. So he was kind of also thought it was fun to just kind of shut that's it in their awesome. yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. That's, that's amazing. amazing. Yeah. This is the and it was gorgeous nice 95 degrees not used to that heat at all and I got a little bit of color so then I went to Arizona last week for a work trip so I'm actually a little bronzed now (laughs) might not (laughs) girl bring the sunshine back although we are getting nicer weather now I had sunburn today walking around at Greenway so these bring some sunscreen to work apparently it's nice nice now so did Max go on the trip with you no, we wanted him to because it, he's graduating. Right. Well, he's graduating on Saturday. Well, he is graduating on Saturday, but he's not walking. But he, with the end of the year, we thought uh, he thought that it would be a little too stressful. So we'll have to bring him next year. That's understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Las Vegas awesome. is such a fun place to visit. Yeah. One it's of so- those places where you just like go and you lose track of all like time. Yeah. What day is it? And you don't even, the thing is, you don't even have to, you know, gamble or drink or anything like that. Um, when you go there, you can have a good time just like walking around the beautiful shops and the shopping. hotels and yes. so much yeah. to do there. Did you do shopping there? Did you do any yeah. shopping? I mean, what did I get? I got some leggings, a dress. Oh. I'm drawing a blank. Oh, Zara. I just love that they have that massive Zara. So hard yeah. to buy one. Um, oh. Oh, and Top Shop, that was a really fun place to hit up where there's not always a Top Shop. Yeah. And then in and out. My mom did the Sprinkles ATM. She's a big fan of that. Oh, those are so fun. cute. Yeah, that's, that's I always feel like fun. so posh when I do that. Right. <laughs> a little cupcake from the ATM. I love that. Courtney, so I was so in France. We were just in Paris. Yeah. And- when I was on the Champs Elysees, there's a Zara there. Champs Elysees. Oh my gosh. She's so... I speak French guys, so I French her. The whole time. Ta- wait, French the whole time we were there, she was like, Do you guys need me to talk for you? Because I can. Yeah, and sure. then she'd like totally say, out. Yeah, not no, know no. what to say. I only messed up, so I didn't <laughs> they were trying to have me talk to this taxi driver. Because oh we my gosh, had, this poor man. This poor man. He was so confused. We had to drive, get a car and drive around France and like the you're not that's just a big no-no like if you travel abroad you should not rent a car and try to drive in Europe I mean that's just you shouldn't do it it was well, exciting. we had to do it <laughs> exciting is one word but you guys were trying to get me to like ask for instructions about how to drive and I was like I don't think we can learn how to drive in Europe in five minutes like this is just oh it, so I was bad. under pressure so bad so I didn't perform my best but in the <laughs> restaurants I really Frenched it up but anyways crunched it up yeah, yes you she did French it up we were passing her number to some French boys. We were. Oh, la la. It is. 
There were some cuties. But yes, ladies, if you're looking for a boyfriend, go to France. Go to France. Because Angers. there were some good looking men there. It's a university town. We didn't see an ugly one. So, yeah. Good place to be. Of course, they all speak French. So that could be a barrier. Right. You know? But like, yeah. it's a romantic language. So maybe you can learn. It's like an educational yeah. thing, right? Yeah. But anyways, oh coming full circle, I was at Zara. My mom and I spent probably, I think we literally spent five hours there. And so I got a dress there too. What if we got the same dress? That would be crazy. Just I, 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 well, I had one on before and then I took it off because I wanted to wear this. Okay. Well, cozy. Cozy. I love Zara too. We share the same love. Just thought I'd say that. Yeah. So... We have to talk about pageant things, obviously, yes, because you're Miss Wisconsin, and that's like such a big part of who you are. So I know a little bit about like your pageant life pre Miss Wisconsin, but not a ton. So I, I mean, I'm curious: were you a pageant girl before you started competing no. um, in Miss America program at all, or you no, know, like what kind of inspired you? I always wanted to do a pageant growing up, and then just. Never. I mean, I used to hate talking in front of people to an extreme. I would get sick before school and just not want to do it. It was just the worst thing in the world. Uh, so I remember walking at the end of my freshman year and it just kind of hit me that most of my scholarship money had come from my high school. They're all one year scholarships. So I knew the Miss America organization and I was followed it, thought the girls were incredible um and realized it would be a great opportunity so I kind of just called up Joe and wanted to sign up for Miss Madison didn't realize it was almost Miss Wisconsin they were going to prep day uh so I followed along and then I was the first contestant to get my paperwork in for Miss Madison the year Rihanna won um didn't I kind of realized she was in Miss Wisconsin but not fully I still remember texting um Max saying I Girls been Miss Wisconsin once already. Um, had no idea. Even Maddie Morgan, um, I knew she was the teen, and she intimidated me just a little bit. Um, and now it's funny that we're friends. Oh but gosh, hilarious. Yeah. So that was my first pageant. I did Miss Harbor Cities that year too. It was the um, first year they did it, and it was in Manitowoc. So I'm like, why not? Um, I still remember that was the worst interview of my life. Still had <laughs> no idea what I was doing at all. Uh, and then I kind of worked on things, came back the next year, did Miss Harbor Cities and Miss Green Bay. I was a runner up at least, was getting somewhere and thought I was ready. Not at all. I uh, went to New York that summer and right before I started my internship, I went to Miss New York with Susan Foch. And what is Maddie saying? Ha, me into, okay. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who are listening right now, Maddie is one of Courtney and my very good friends. So it's just funny that, like, at one point she was intimidated. Actually, though, like, Courtney had yeah, a her- section. It was all um, her miss from Kate's family. Yes. And Maddie was the teen, Miss Wisconsin's Outstanding Teen, when I competed, like, the one year I competed in Miss Wisconsin's Outstanding Teen, she was the teen. And it was the year that Rachel Wyatt also came. So, like, not only was Miss Wisconsin's Outstanding Teen there, but Miss America's Outstanding Teen was there. And I was freaking out. Oh, my gosh. I was so nervous. (laughs) That's amazing. Oh, where was I? But Oh, yeah. Uh, I distracted you. I distracted you. Don't worry. That's the point of this. Um, But anyway, I went to Miss New York with Susan Foch, and that was the year it had just been the three-peat, so Nina and Kira were there, and I'm like, dang, these girls can speak. We need to work on that, and I needed to redo my platform, so I kind of spent the summer redoing things, and I said once I got back to Wisconsin, like, I wanted this to be my first job out of college. I wanted to be Miss Wisconsin, so... The last year of school, I really focused on that. And then one Miss Green Bay. And the rest is history, I guess. Love yeah. it. Awesome. That's awesome. That's like a great journey to the pageant world because it was so organic. And I, yeah. I it really flowed and I kind of grew with it. And yes, yeah. it was. It was like really natural. And that's like the best thing to hear. Yeah, um, yeah that's awesome. I think it's great that, like, you, well, first that you got to meet Nina and Kira. I mean, that's. Awesome. awesome. I and, remember at Miss America, we didn't really, obviously don't have our phones very often. Um, yeah. Meeting Kira. I looked at my phone. There were a ton of messages after one day. And there was one of Kira, like not wearing any makeup, like probably going to the beach, the boardwalk or something. And my dad, he, oh my he, he had kind of mentioned it backstage. And I hadn't like 
really had a full conversation with her. And she's like, I met your dad today. And I'm like, what did he say? What did he do? He was so excited that he, he knows everyone, knows all of them. I've talked about him and he knows the pictures, but yeah. Oh my gosh, your dad's so cool. Yep. That's, 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 America. that's pretty cool. So <laughs> I want to know, um, cause a lot of our viewers will be women and girls who are competing in pageants. Mm -hmm. How did you prepare for the interview portion of the competition? Because that can be really intimidating. And a lot of times girls don't necessarily know what the best way to prepare is. So what would be your advice? I did a lot of bulleting. I had a notebook, just like a normal spiral notebook um, for like each stage of like before for Miss Green Bay, for Miss Wisconsin, leading up to Miss America. I filled one up. I would watch the news, write down topics, write down um possible interview questions. I would, when I did mock interviews, I'd write all the questions down. Um, when I was going over my platform, I would just kind of spell out literally anything I could. And I would write bullet points and different um, words that describe me to fill it up. So it wasn't ever like a full on answer I was providing, just different ideas. And it was super easy to flip through and kind of review questions. When I was in the car, I would have it next to me, which probably wasn't the safest. Um, but it was kind of always with me, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Almost destroyed. They are so they're probably right here. Just happened to be. I don't know why they're right here, but they're <laughs> not from Miss America. Oh my gosh, you have cool. them. I uh, yeah, I, I go back whenever I'm doing mock oh, interviews and I look through questions. The presidential oh. doesn't necessarily relate anymore, but that was hard being in 2016. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, Are no. you like a very sentimental person in the sense that you like to hold on to those kind of things? Yes. Actually by my feet, there's this massive bin of just things from the year. And then even random things I probably shouldn't keep. There was, I was going through things and I was moving back to Madison probably around this time last year. And I found a to-do list from leading up to Miss America. And I had I was always big on, oh, like, in how many days I'll become Miss Wisconsin, how many days I'll become Miss America, just kind of like the positive thinking, and I had that on the top, and then the things I did every day, and then all these random things, and it looked crazy, and I kept it, because I need to remember that I was I crazy. Love cool. <laughs> I love that. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, kind of like branching off of that, what was your mindset like when you went to Miss America? Um, I know, like, you're all you had all your notes and you were writing things down yeah. like X amount of days until you became Miss Wisconsin or Miss America. But like, what? tell us a little bit about your mindset and how that affected your performance. Yeah, I was really thankful to be going just, I mean, every single day was a dream and it was just so cool to be waking up every single day in Atlantic city and be living that dream with the most amazing people. Um, I was super positive and I felt loved by my family was all there. My best friend, um, Danielle Dufour, one of the um, directors was there all week. She was kind of my person that was like watching my talent. And then, I mean, all the Harbor cities and Miss Green Bay people came to watch and just knowing that they were all there were, it was just amazing to, I yeah. mean, just to feel so supported years for so long. It was just the best experience. Ugh, I love yeah. it. I love that. So what kinds of skills, I mean, now that you're in the workforce, what kinds of skills did you learn through being Miss Wisconsin and just being involved in the Miss America program in general that you feel are most beneficial now as, you know, someone who has a career? Oh, there are so many. I think the biggest one is the public speaking and communication skills. You just learn as Miss Wisconsin to talk to so many different kinds of people, whether it's little kids, um, adults, like a big boardroom, a big conference, or a more informal event um, at a tractor pull or something like that. And that is extremely helpful in all areas. <laughs> I love oh my gosh. Like, why is she having? <laughs> Courtney's <laughs> having like this very like meaningful <laughs> conversation and Huey slides in with Culver. <laughs> Oh my god. I had ballet before this. So this is like my reward. And like this is a good story. This is like a compliment. You know, when people like get food, when people are telling a story because it's like like oh, a movie. Now you're, you're like engaged. Like I'm that engaged with your story right now. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, like this oh is like a movie, gosh. Courtney. This is amazing material. I love it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I cannot. I cannot. Okay, so last pageant related question yeah. for you. So, what is your best piece of advice for all of the women who are competing for Miss Wisconsin this year? Oh my goodness. It's so exciting. Just even thinking, I get like all teary eyed and excited for the girls just because it's such, uh, there's, I mean, these next few weeks are stressful and crazy. And I remember crying and just wondering, is it enough? I had never been to Miss Wisconsin still to this day. I haven't watched Miss Wisconsin. So I'm excited to go this year and actually be in the audience and watch. Um, but just, I guess follow what you want to do. There is a ton of people giving you advice. Some of it is, I mean, great. All the people are trying to be helpful, but stay really true to you uh, and know what you want, who you are, what you're going to do as Miss Wisconsin, Miss America, and just stay really true to that. And piece number two, take every step of competition one step, one day at a time. Like, Don't be thinking of your swimsuit when you haven't even done your interview yet. Um, That helped me tremendously. Kim told me that. And that's something I tried really, really hard to stick to. I still remember on finals night, standing right behind the curtain for swimsuit and thinking, what am I going to do for evening gown? And I'm like, get back into it. That's not for how many different things or um, even for finals night. um, Some girls were going over on stage questions. Possibility was uh, when we were still wearing our evening gowns, haven't even done it yet. And I'm like, well, I could potentially not be in the top five. So like, don't worry about it until it, until it's there. And when you ask, when they ask it on stage, it's a different experience anyway. So. Right. Yeah. Really living in the moment, I think is really important. And just to focus on what's in front of you. And that's so applicable to really anything you do in life, you know, being present um, is the best way to live. And Mm -hmm. I think that's, when you accomplish the most too. It's so rewarding. I think because I was that way, especially on finals night, I can go back and just really think about how I felt in those moments. And they're all so special. And um, I mean, it ended obviously really great. So yeah, yeah, it did. (laughs) Yeah. And we are so, so, so happy that you agreed to be our first guest. This is 16. Before you go, we're going to do a quick little round of Pepsi versus Coke, which is a fun little game we're going to play with every guest that we have on. And it's going to, we're going to actually put you on the clock. We're going to give you one minute and we're going to try and fit in as many questions as we possibly can in the one minute time frame. Alternating asking. Um, Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. We have a mega list here. Um, And we have not, for those of you listening, we have not given Courtney any of these questions ahead of time. So this is all totally off the cuff. We're going to go for it. A minute on the clock starts now. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Pepsi or Coke? Neither. I don't drink soda. Drawings or paintings? Paintings. Introvert or extrovert? Extrovert. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Sweet pickles or dill pickles? What was the first one? Sweet pickles or dill pickles? Dill pickles. Rural or urban? Urban. Silver or gold? Gold. Tan or pale? I prefer to be spray tanned. (laughs) (laughs) Baseball or basketball? Baseball. Dancing or singing? Dancing. Can't sing. Brush dice or cubed dice? Cubed. Board games or video games? Board. Smile or game face? Smile or game face. Facial hair or clean shaven? Clean shaven. Scrambled or fried? Scrambled. Last one, spicy or mild? Spicy. Love it. That was a minute. <laughs> All right. Hey, where did I get in? Awesome. You got in. Oh, I wasn't even keeping we track, actually. Count. I, I feel like you probably got in a little over 10. So oh, yeah. go back and count. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney. Yeah. Yeah. This is so this is so fun. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. You we'll have to have you on again. Yes. Love it. Bye, Courtney. Bye, Courtney. Bye. 
awesome. That was fun. That was super fun. She's such a doll. She is so great. Be sure to follow oh her on social media, Instagram, guys. Yes, she's all over the place. She yes. is a total tech marketing social media genius. So she's follow great. her. Yes. Um, and we are going to be signing off on our first yes. ever Table Talk podcast. That was Which was fun. super fun. That yes. was a lot of fun. So we'll be back, not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday after, and it'll be at 8 p.m., which will be our standard time um, going forward. So it's a bi-weekly podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes so you never miss an episode, and you get reminders of when we have new episodes coming out. Yeah. As always, you'll be able to watch our show live. Yeah. Um, just visit Public House Media, like their Facebook page. And you'll see us live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Yeah. Central Standard Time. Share with your friends. Um, at the end, you can share this Facebook Live, I know. Share it with them. Share the Facebook Live with your friends. Tag your friends. We just want more people to enjoy the conversation. Join in in the conversation. Yes. And um, we love. thank you to all of you it. who like, commented yeah. and stuff. We love this kind of engaging, right. um, conversational, yeah. you know aspect. Of Follow us on our socials. Oh. I know we do some Instagram lives. We're going to be doing some Instagram we do. lives together. We do. Yeah. So we'll put all that out just there. some more. We'll just do some short little fun things because we like to have fun. We so do. follow us we on do. our socials. Keely Collins, McKenna Collins. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching Thank you guys. You. Bye, Bye guys.